Hello everyone, I am Alcaster1. This is Professor Flexbeard's Wondrous Steam Power mod, and we're going to have some fun with this one today. Alright. Alright, so the first thing you're going to find in this interesting mod, which introduces steam power into the game, you're going to have to go looking around for this stuff. Zinc and copper. This is what you need to make all of that stuff that this mod lets you do. But the first thing you got to do is you got to figure out how to make all this. For that, you need one block of each, and you find this in the same areas that you'll find iron. The same levels, so just go to your caving and go find some zinc and some copper. They typically spawn in some fairly good sized amounts together. Um, if you're already in an existing world you'll probably have to go somewhere you haven't been to find it. Um, I had to go about 500 blocks away to find some in my world. Or if you don't care and want to start a new world you can. Um, if you really, really, really have something you don't want to have to redo, don't want to go too far, you always have the option of using the MC Edit program to uh, go into that, open up your file, and do the repopulate tool to get stuff to respawn. If you know, if you don't mind cheating. Anyway, so you find one of each, put it together with a book on a crafting table, and you get this the Esteemed Innovation Book. Right click on it and you will open up the book. And he made it look kind of like you yourself wrote this as a journal, which is kind of neat. In it you'll find all the different things that we can do. This is the uh, 0.25 beta release on August 3rd, or August 2nd, one of the two. And this is the new stuff that's been redone. He's reworked the systems a little bit. So we've got all the different basic information here, the different stuff that's been added in, all the different things you can do with this stuff, and there is quite a bit of stuff you can do. Um, yes, there is an exosuit, there are tools, machines, there are weapons. We're going to go over all that stuff, and yeah. So zinc and copper you do just like any other ore. You throw it in a furnace, you get out ingots. One thing is a little different though, you're going to be still getting your ingots, you're still going to get your nuggets, but you're also going to get crushed ore and plates. Now you make that using another tool that this mod brings into the game, and we'll go over that in a second. Most of the stuff in this you're going to be making out of brass, isn't it pretty and shiny and yellow? Brass, you make three parts copper, one part zinc in a crucible, and you get out some brass. You'll get four blocks of brass out using the same uh, crucible that you see right there. You can also do what's called gilded iron. Gilded iron is iron covered in gold, which lets you basically have the durability of iron with the enchantability of gold which is pretty neat um, and yeah so to make this crucible you need seven clay bricks put them together like that and you make a crucible crucible you need to have over a heat source um, lava works and uh, burning netherrack works lava only takes up one space you just you know make a hole stick some lava in there and there you go um, another rack you have to go two down because you have to have a space for the, the fire to burn so if you're pressed for space go with the lava all this stuff you have to have an open hand to uh, to access you see here that's, that's all it does it just dumps out the uh, material once it's in there but there's nothing in there right now there's no fire there's nothing for it to work with so but that by itself will do nothing you need a mold and before you can have the mold you need a mold holder 
six clay bricks, just like that. And you have a mold holder. It just opens and closes like a big mouth. But uh, you need to have actual molds in the mold holder. We have nuggets, we have the plates, and we have ingots. And these guys are made with two clay bricks, and you get a blank mold. You will then have to come over to this guy, a carving table, which you make by having seven wood blocks, any wood blocks, and a blank mold, and you get this guy. And so what you'll do is you come over with your blank mold, you right click, and now I got nugget mold, plate mold, ingot mold, and then you place it in one of these guys and you're all set. Now when it comes to orienting these things, you, you have to do this in a very specific way. You can't just throw it and off it goes. So you have to have your crucible, and then your mold holder it has to open towards this guy. And then you put your mold in there. So then this stuff will pour into that. See how this has this little slot here? That's where the material is supposed to uh, go into the mold to make the component. Now once you have all that stuff, you've started making your brass, you can start making some of the more interesting little guys. Now this also brings some simple little tools into the game. The pipe wrench. Pipe wrench is a tool for adjusting a lot of the stuff in this game. And a lot of this um, mods, you have the option of doing stuff with either the plates or ingots. Now, pretty much anytime you see me here listing a plate, you can also use an ingot. However, it's more cost effective to use plates. Uh, you basically, you throw two ingots into the crucible, and then they dump out into the plate mold. Now for every two ingots you throw into the crucible, you get three plates. So it's a little more effective to use plates than it is to use ingots, because you get, you get more bang for your buck there. Now one of the neat things that you can do is you can have a spyglass. So you get uh, the five brass plates and a couple panes of glass, and you can zoom in on far away things. Look at that. There's my, my workshop over there. We'll be heading over there in a little bit. Yeah. So it's right click to zoom in, left click to zoom out. And then you got this little guy. This is a pretty neat little thing. Survivalist Toolkit. Now what this does, you have this with you and you have some tools and they're about to break well when they break this will save the parts the survivalist toolkit and it's a pretty neat little guy you know you got five pieces of leather a stick a string and a brick and you make the survivalist toolkit why the heck do you have a brick well you ever seen those little pouches that you know you have the uh, the string and then you pull up the bead to lock it shut so you got a brick for a bead that's that's what that is kind of a big bead, but you know, whatever. And so now we've gone over the basics of this. We're going to go over some of the more advanced components, the steam power. For that, we're going to go upstairs here. So the heart and soul of every single system is your boiler, this little guy here. The boiler you make by having you take eight plates of brass around a furnace and you get a boiler. A boiler by itself won't really do much. Uh, in addition to that you have a steam tank which you make pretty much the same way as you would a chest. Now these guys are stackable so you can make like hundreds of these things and have huge capacity. If you do that though I would not have one of these little guys. It will take forever to fill up that system. Uh, yeah, it's, you, you really don't need a lot of capacity. Once you get things going, it, it gets going pretty quick. You have pipes. 
pipes you make a lot like you do the tanks only it's only six and you put them together like that you know plates up there plates up down there space in the middle you have a pipe now for that you get four pipes for your six plates for four ingots you can get four pipes you can also do this with ingots but then you'll be using up six ingots and yeah like I said it's more cost effective to use the plates now once you have pipes you sometimes you'll want to turn stuff off turn stuff on for that you have the valve pipe you take a normal pipe craft it with a lever just like that and you get this guy a little spinning animation on the valve there to let you know it is working now you, you, you need to know what is going on in your steam system for that we have this guy the steam gauge which you take a compass for those of you who don't remember how to make a compass you take four iron ingots around a piece of redstone you get your compass you take your compass put it four nuggets of brass around it and you get this guy neat thing about this guy you put a comparator around it and you'll get a redstone signal out of it this is pretty nifty because you can use that to activate various things um, and I'll show you a couple different things you can do those of you who don't have a lot of room you need one of these guys a rupture disc and uh, so these things will explode if you don't have some kind of pressure release and they'll do about a little less than what a creeper will do when they explode so these things can be considered little bombs this guy will stop all of that from happening a zinc plate with the brass nuggets and this will keep your whole place from exploding and falling apart kind of an important thing now this is one of the new guys for the 2.5 or the 0.25 beta the steam whistle you got two pipes three plates and a nugget and you get a little whistle guy and so that takes care of the two safety systems of this setup so now you've got your steam you got pressure building up you need to do something with it well you can hook it up to a furnace for one and start cooking stuff and for that you'll need this the steam heater again a furnace two brass plates a pipe and three copper nuggets the copper nuggets that's your heating elements that's what the copper does you know steam in to let it all go and it doesn't show up as full power on the furnace when you have it going but you do get some nice yummy steamed food from this you can also use it to refine ore and uh, sto uh, cobblestone back into stone glass from sand you know all the normal stuff you can do with a normal furnace it just takes a little bit longer since it's not at full heat another neat thing the steam hammer steam hammer you actually have to pair this with a anvil now what this will do it will let you repair your tools it will let you rename your tools and it does not cost any experience uh, to use this guy though the steam system has to be over halfway now one last basic little tool for this mod is this guy the Archimedes screw now to make this you need three panes of glass three brass plates and three brass nuggets now what this thing does it is a companion tool for the furnaces and you place it on one of the lower levels of the furnace and there, there is limitations as to where you can attach things to the furnace and we'll go over that later and it has to be provided steam which is why the pipe is there and it has to be in a source block of water now what this will do is that as steam pressure starts to build it will start automatically feeding water into the furnace the nice thing about this is if you don't have one of these guys you will have to sit here with a bucket of water constantly dumping more water into this from a source block of water and you'll be driving yourself nuts because this will use up water pretty quickly yeah it is a very big help now limitations of how you can connect things to a furnace furnace you can connect hoppers to it to throw in more 
uh, material. You can have the hopper hooked up to the top for putting fuel into it. You can have it hooked up to the sides. Pipes, however, can only go into the top of a furnace. So if I put a pipe right there, you can see it's just a bundle of connection. It doesn't work. I go on the top, and it works. So there are some limitations there. So I've got a tank set up on this one with a steam gauge to let me know what's happening, and a rupture disc. And this is a good basic little setup. You got some storage capacity. You've got easy access points for adding on, you know, the a rupture disc for safety, the steam gauge to let you know where the system's at, piping to go off to your various tools. And it's just a good simple little setup just to get things started. Now, once you get things really going at your place, you got a lot of machines going you're gonna want to build one of these. This is the flash boiler. And to make one of that, it takes quite a bit. So you need two brass plates, a steam tank, a boiler, two plates, and three pieces of nether brick. And you will get two of these flash boiler components. You need eight of these total to make one of these guys. And once you get one of these guys, this thing will produce massive amounts of steam for your systems. So that covers the basics of Professor Flaxbeard's Wondrous Steam Power Mod. Tune in next time and we'll go over some more details on the more advanced systems, how to use some of the bigger tools that are in that mod and what they can do and how to use them. All right, until then, have fun and experiment with what we've got so far and tune in next time. Goodbye.